What's happening, boot junkies? It's been a while. I'm sorry about that. It has been a long time, and I'm sorry about that. But it's but I'm back now in the booth, and it feels a little weird in here. Hold on one second. <laughs> sorry, that was totally cheesy. I tried. I tried to be cool. I'm not cool. It's okay. Finally, finally, I have a new booth. I didn't shoot as much video as I should have along the way to show how I made this. Uh, but I did shoot a bunch of stuff along the way. So what I thought I'd do is I just sort of string a bunch of the things that I did together and sort of give you an explanation of how I built this booth, just to just to introduce you to it, just so you, you get a sense of, uh, of what, I've, what I've done here, for better or for worse. So let's take a look. So... The build versus buy decision. I'm working on the build versus buy decision, and I think I've finally come to the answer of the build versus buy decision for my new vocal booth. And it's come down to, I'm going to try and build it. That leads us to the conundrum. I'm a stinky carpenter. I really, it's not something I ever tried to do, and I never really have become adept at carpentry. It's not really my strong suit. I am limiting myself to two tools. I have a circular saw and I have a drill. It has to knock down some sound, but it doesn't have to be soundproof. My basement studio is actually fairly quiet from a noise floor perspective. Really the only thing I have to worry about is, is light footsteps coming through, the, coming through the ceiling. And I don't know if you just heard it, but a train went by. Soundproofing is not critical, although I would like to have a very low noise floor in the booth, similar to what I've had with the Wisp Room. I don't know that I'll be able to get that in my first pass. I'm gonna try, but I would like to be able to knock it down. And then lastly, I need to be able to put insulation in it so that I can try and make it as acoustically um, sound as I can, so that it is uh, dead, it doesn't have reverb, it doesn't have boxiness, and so there will be a fair bit of insulation. So I'm going to try and build this booth and we'll see what happens. Well, there it is. There's the new booth. That's all the stuff that I hope is overkill for the booth. But thank you to Home Depot for delivering it. It came on a flatbed. That's uh, the booth. The first thing I did was I started out by making a sort of a makeshift work surface, a work table. Uh, I just got these uh, saw horses from Home Depot. As you can see, I don't have like a ton of storage space, so I got stuff that was small. And I assembled it out of these two saw horses, a couple of two by fours, and this uh, insulating sheet. The insulating sheet actually worked really well because I could saw through the wood and into this as sort of a sacrificial top, and that was like $35. Each of the corner posts, uh, sort of my anchor posts for, because I was making this freestanding, were made out of four by fours. So I started by cutting uh, four four by fours. Then I made this uh, makeshift uh, straight edge for my skill saw. You can see I'm great with the skill saw here. But this way I uh, could do straight edges everywhere. They'd be all consistently straight. And I learned how to make these from uh, a YouTube video. Always wear your dust mask. So what I'm doing here is I'm cutting these panels down to a two foot width. A sheet of MDF is like two feet and an inch wide in the US. So I'm cutting them down into pieces that I could manage by myself, that I could carry by myself. And so I'm just taking these down to two foot width and just using a, a framing square there to make things 24 inches wide. One of my initial goals was to try and create panels that were modular. Since I thought maybe I would be replacing some of these, I'd want to switch things out. So maybe if I came up with a ventilation unit, I would switch these panels out. So part of what I was doing was creating these individual panels that I could take out and put back in. You'll see later that it really doesn't... I was a little ambitious with that goal. It, uh, it didn't really work out, but that's what I was doing here. I was framing each one as if it was his own little miniature modular wall. So I used uh, construction screws for everything. These screws really worked great. They use a special uh, star-shaped head. They didn't strip very easily, and they bit into the wood really easy. Uh, I used screws for everything. I didn't do any nailing. 
So here I just flipped it over and I'm putting the MDF on top with the ugly side uh, facing in where the, uh, where the insulation will cover it up. Once I had it flipped over, the thing I learned about MDF is the edges um, are fairly fragile and they'll come apart. And so it's always best to pre-drill, especially when using MDF, because it will break apart. So I pre-drilled all of my holes uh, to make sure that I wouldn't be breaking off any corners. I then used these screws with this sort of protective washer so that I wouldn't drill too far into the into the MDF itself. And I think these, these, little, these little washer caps, decorative washer caps, really worked well. They look good and they didn't, uh, they didn't, I never broke any MDF as a result. So that's essentially the process for making one panel. So this is like one miniature wall. So as you can see, the next thing I had to do was try and carry these big panels downstairs. I was, that's why I was trying to make them sort of the biggest panel I could make and still carry it downstairs. So this was one of my limiting factors was being able to get them through my pretty small kitchen. Uh, and turns out that these were pretty heavy. So I just sort of manhandled them down. It was just me working by myself. I just tried to manhandle, manhandle them down into my basement, into where the studio was uh, as best I could. The walls in this uh, basement are not ideal. I just didn't have the money to, to go through and replace them. So the, uh, the crazy uh, wood panel is gonna, gonna be there for a while until I can take it down. So then what I started to do is I just started to just stand up. I made a bunch of these panels and I just started to stand them up to try and get them to uh, be where they were going to be. So I was just sort of eyeballing it at this point and getting everything to match up. You can see that's why I used the 4x4. Four four. So I had two uh, good solid places to screw together. In my limited carpentry experience, that seemed to be uh, a sensical way to do it. So I had nice, something nice and sturdy since I wasn't anchoring these to the wall. It was going to be a freestanding unit and I wanted it to be nice and sturdy. So then I started making sure that they were plumb and would screw them together to make sure that I had a nice plumb corner to work with. So we're on day two of trying to build the booth, and so far it's coming along pretty well. I, I started by making individual, all we finished panels, making them 24 inches wide so that I could have a six foot by six foot booth. After doing the assembly, I realized I was going about it, I was going about it wrong, and it was, the pieces weren't fitting together as well as I had hoped. And so I ended up having to, to trim and, and shim things together. My cuts were all nice and straight, so everything does meet up. But because of the nature of the two by fours, everything doesn't line up quite so well. So, in, so instead, well, as I go into day two, I have to build another wall and a wall, and I have to figure out a door. Uh, but this time I'm going to do the framing down here. I was doing the framing upstairs uh, out in my driveway. I'm gonna do all the cuts up there to keep the, to keep the sawdust at bay, but I'm actually going to assemble the framing here and stand it up down here. Uh, so that way I think it makes it a little bit easier to carry all the pieces down because the MDF is incre it's incredibly heavy and I have a very narrow area to, to walk it through to get downstairs in my kitchen. So that's what I'm going to keep doing, working on today, and we'll see what happens. So progress is being made. Yeah, I really didn't shoot any video of this part. Uh, what I did because I was really space constrained, my, my little downstairs room is, is so tight. Essentially what I did is I just scaled up that one box that you saw me build, uh, except it, it was uh, three, six feet wide instead of two feet wide. And I, I just framed it out with 24 inch centers and then cut the uh, MDF down to a two by four sheet. We now have three walls and two thirds of the ceiling of the booth. And I'm not giving measurements because they're all going to be different, but essentially I'm just doing everything as 24 on center studs. Um, in the back, they were double because I, I tried a different, I tried a different way to make the panels and I realized that it wasn't, it was harder. I was making it harder than it needed to be. Uh, and so on this wall and this wall, it will just be a regular, uh, what do they call it? A stud on the top, a plate on the bottom. Uh, was it a king? 
I forget what it's called, but uh, a plate on the top, a plate on the bottom, and regular studs. Now I'm gonna go for a 30 inch door that's I think 73 inches tall, uh, just just slightly lower than this uh, two by four here, because that's the that's gonna be a a stud across the top that holds the uh, that holds the ceiling in place. Uh, and so this is the part I'm most nervous about is one having enough room to be able to put a wall and stand it up, uh, getting everything to come together in just the right way and making sure I can build a door that actually fits. So again, because I'm a bad YouTuber, no video shot here, but you can see the next wall went up and I did build a, a basic door, hinges on the outside, uh, just a, a plain door. Well, this is the moment of truth. I've got the wall stood up that's got the door on it. I think it opens. I think it opens. Uh, I'm going to get it into place and then hopefully screw it together. Doors are complicated, way more complicated than I thought because I'm not, I'm not buying one. I'm trying to build one from scratch and make it fit. I don't know. I hope, I hope. So again, I didn't have space for a tripod or anything like that. I'm just handheld. I'm, I'm really super space constrained at this point. So I had just uh, stood everything up, screwed it together. The corners now, each corner has a four by four that everything gets screwed into. The ceiling is now screwed into place uh, into those uh, studs across the top. And hopefully it fits. I did it. <laughs> uh, yeah, so... My booth is, uh, at least structurally, it's done. So here you get a fairly good picture of the door, and I just did it two layers thick, mostly so I could use a standard doorknob, uh, which is, you know, one and three eighths. This is one and three quarter inches thick. Uh, but I didn't do two panels thick because it was so heavy to try and carry down by itself. So I made it sort of with that hollow center. I have, everything's going to get super dark in here. Uh, but I have a six by six by six ish cube that will be acoustically a nightmare. Uh, wow, that was heavy. I tell you what, MDF is no joke. I think the door weighs 75 pounds because it's an uh, inch and three quarter MDF. It's two layers thick. Um, everything else is a single layer of three quarter inch MDF. Oh, heavy. Get a friend. Man, I did this all by myself, and that was probably a pretty stupid thing to do. Ugh. It's all right. What am I going to do? My first time being a carpenter. But I got pretty close. I got pretty close to what I had envisioned. And so uh, the next step will be to test it out. I still got to drill some holes to let cables snake into it. Got to make sure there's power. Got to make sure there's lights. Got to make sure there's insulation, uh, acoustic insulation. Uh, but otherwise, it's uh, it's coming along. All right, moment of truth time. You're going to hear this the same time I am. I've set up a microphone, <laughs> and I'm in the untreated booth. And as we expected, it is a complete echo chamber in here for a couple of reasons. One, it's got no treatment whatsoever, and also... Dimensions of the room, it's the same distance this way as it is this way. So I'm going to probably standing right in the middle of a great big uh, standing wave. And so I'm going to try and go through and make some after treatment. You know, So I'm going to try and do a before and after here. So this is the before. This is how it sounds in the untreated space. Can still hear, can still hear the outside. I don't know if you can hear the dog barking, but the dog is barking. So as I expected, this does not knock down a ton of sound yet. Um, the the insulation may help. It's fairly airtight in here, but it's not perfect. It's not perfect. Uh, but this was about what I expected, sound suppression wise. The the treatment may help a little bit. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to put insulation in. I've got uh, carpet so that it's more comfortable for when I stand, stand for a long time. So it's just going to be just regular carpet padding and an area rug in here. And we're going to put mineral wool all around the walls. And then we'll decide if I'm going to lower the ceiling at all to add any insulation to the top. I don't know if I'll need it or not 
because of the carpet. We'll see. It's a short distance, so I may. We're gonna we're gonna try it. Hopefully, we'll get some better lights in here too. I've said it once, I've said it a million times, when you're working with insulation, gloves, dust mask, eye protection. Dust mask, by far the most important. You gotta protect your instrument, make sure that you get something that's rated for fiberglass, uh, fiberglass insulation. I'm using mineral wool to insulate in here because it's less expensive than the Owens Corning stuff. At my big box store, they only had it in 15 inch or 16 inch widths. I did 24 inch studs so I could save a little money on the studding. So I'm gonna end up having to cut <laughs> all these little cubes. It's gonna add time, but the end result should all be the same because this is gonna get covered over with uh, fabric. So we'll see what happens. When you're working with this stuff, it helps to have an insulation knife. I think the only other tool I'm gonna need is I got a framing square just to help me cut in straight lines. So the whole point of this part is to absorb unwanted frequencies. So you heard in the first sound test, there was lots of that flutter echo. There was a real boominess in my voice. This acoustic insulation will absorb those unwanted frequencies. It reduces the echoes. It absorbs bass, uh, especially when you make it nice and thick. And this heavy, um, dense material is really good at absorbing those unwanted frequencies. And those frequencies especially build up uh, in the corners in uh, in the edges and so I find that it's just easier to just treat the whole wall itself uh, and that way you you just capture all of the echoes and all of the standing waves so uh, you can be more scientific about it and just go with specific placement but I find it easier just to do the whole wall hold on for me batteries okay this is take two. This is after the first round of insulation has been put in. Whew. All right. It's still dusty in here, so I can only stay in here for a second. So I have the insulation in on the walls. So I have front, back, side to side. Don't have the door, don't have any ceiling still have the bare concrete floor. So the question is, it should sound better and it is starting to sound better. What I still find is that I hear a boxiness. I think it's between the ceiling and the floor. Now I have a, a little just area rug and some carpet uh, pad that's gonna go down on the floor, mostly to make it comfortable for me. But hopefully this will start to improve the sound quite a bit. So as I get right up on the microphone, try not to make it pop, as I get right up on the microphone, does it still sound okay? And I think it's getting it's getting better. It's not perfect yet, but it's getting better. Let's see if the carpet does anything. And then if that doesn't work, then we gotta go up here. And I don't have anything for that yet. So here I'm just putting down a, a basic you know, six by eight uh, carpet pad, really super cheap from Home Depot. And on top of it, I'm going to put uh, the cheapest area rug I could find, just really basic stuff. Well, you probably can't see it, but it's just a six by eight airy rug that I'll cut to six feet by six feet. Still a little dusty. That's why I have the, the uh, dust mask on, just in case. Do one more test and we get the mic set up. Okay, so this is take three. All right, so this is take three. Uh, now I have eliminated much of the echo, but if I clap, 
you can still hear that there's a bunch of flutter. It's getting better, though. I'm getting this dialed in. I think that the, we may actually need just another layer because this booth is, is big. I kind of expected that three inches, which is what this is, might not be enough. But I, before I went and bought six bag, <laughs> before I went and bought six bags of this stuff, I wanted to make sure. I do think that this needs a, a fair bit more treatment. The ceiling is what I'm going to tackle next. I was trying to avoid doing it because I really don't have that much room overhead. This booth is only about six foot five, and that's really the you know the crux of the whole thing. But it's getting much better. So if I get right up on the microphone, it's getting sorry for the light. Um, it's getting much better, much better. I think it's it's almost usable. If I get it down at a at a low talking voice, it's almost usable. So we're getting there. We're getting there. Yeah, at the nearby park, there are people playing tennis. And when that happens, Luca was still getting used to it, and he, he barks a lot. So these are in no way load supporting. These are just here to friction fit the insulation across the top. Yeah, and you'll see. I could really use a helper at this point, but I was working by myself. So, you know, all you need is a good hard head. And if I was a couple inches taller, it would help too. But then I wouldn't fit in the booth. So I'm happy with how tall I am. All right, so now we have the ceiling all framed in, and now we'll put the uh, put the insulation in, and then we'll do another test to see if we do need to add some more. We'll see how it goes. Now for the ceiling, I also used two by threes because this insulation is three inches thick, so the two by three um, is the same thickness as the insulation, so I should have a nice smooth, ideally I should have a nice smooth ceiling when I'm done. I'm putting the insulation in an offsetting pattern, that way, I don't have uh, a clear seam for the for the insulation for the batting. Uh, I'm trying to make it so that when I upholster or put fabric on the ceiling, that there won't be a, a clear line. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. And then I screwed up. I didn't record either enough, or I d uh, did something to the SD card. Because I didn't, I can't find any more of the, and this was just, I can't find any more footage. I know I took more footage, but I'll be doggone if I found, I think I formatted the SD card that had the last bit on it. So, I did end up adding a second round of insulation to this wall and to this wall. So, this wall over here is actually six inches thick with mineral wool, and this wall is six inches thick. So before you saw that it was, uh, there were studs this way, well I had another set this way. So there's a stud here, and a stud down here, and so that I could do insulation across. So I ended up adding another round of six more inches. So I've got three inches here, three inches on, uh, on the wall behind the camera, and six inches everywhere else, and on the floor, it's about an inch of padding, really, just for, for an anti-fatigue. And the door doesn't have anything. It does. All of this treatment does take the, uh, the ambient noise from outside a little. I don't hear the trains at all. You can still hear the dog bark. So if the dog barks, I do, I do wait. Um, and if somebody's really tromping around upstairs, you can you can hear it and, it and it comes through mostly because the door, um, it's just not thick enough. I could probably add a second door and have them. It hasn't it hasn't proven itself to be necessary so far. The whisper room you could you could hear you could hear people walking by in the whisper room too. Uh, because they're not they're not soundproof. After that, 
uh, which I never made any footage for. I did build a desk, um, and I'll maybe shoot some footage of for another video of a desk. Um, I mounted a, a computer monitor, and now I have a. I still have to put in the the mic stands that I had before. Um, I, I'll probably I'll probably do something different with microphones. I've got lights. I just got a couple of LED lights just to add some visual interest back there. Purple. <laughs> orange it's just like a 30 dollar amazon but i kind of like the blue uh i kind of like the blue so i think i'm going to stick with blue for a little while uh, anyway so uh that's everything that's everything for now god this video has been one really just way too long so if you've made it this far thank you really for watching all of that and it's been far too long in the making I, I, I along the way, I felt every step of the way is like, oh, this is not going to be interesting. I'll just wait until the end. I didn't know exactly how it was going to come out. After all was said and done, once I once I added the, the extra six inches, I did. I do feel really comfortable with the quality of the sound. It's been working for uh, the jobs I've been doing. Everybody's been saying that the, the sound is just fine. The my my regular uh, jobs, they said it sounds sounds just like it did before. It sounds just as good as it did before, which is the, really the standard I wanted to meet. My my previous Whisper Room was doing great. I was, you know, booking the work and all the engineers and the directors were happy. So I just wanted to make sure I was at least that good. But the difference is now is I've got, I've got space, I've got comfort, and I can, I get the booth out of, out of the, the living room. So thanks so much. Thanks so much for your patience and thanks so much for watching. Um, I really appreciate it. Now, hopefully you've got a booth. If not, try and make one. You don't have to go this. You don't have to go to this level to 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 make a booth. You certainly can. You you, you don't have to. Um, but I do encourage you to to make some sort of a booth. Get a place where you can record comfortably, so that you can get a mic and record something amazing. That's it. I'll talk to you next time. Thanks.